Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is uh, end of week two and end of week one for Monica and Amber. So um, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you all about just kind of how this week went. I know it's been a little chaotic, the holidays, and then like even just with Amber and Monica, just like kind of getting ramped up into what we're even doing here, right? So um, this has been, yeah, uh, it's been a, an interesting week and hopefully not too stressful for you all. But um, uh, yeah, the, the first topic on the agenda is just to do demos of, of what you all have, have done over the, the last week. Um, so the way those work is we talk about the accept, acceptance criteria, we show in the UI uh, the feature kind of working, um, and then show in the code, um, you know, sort of where you implemented what you did. And um, so each pair kind of goes, takes a turn, and then um, normally we would demo in production on the production URL if possible, but I know this week, like we're kind of, we're coming in hot <laughs> at the end of the week here, so um, demoing on localhost is totally fine. Uh, so I don't know who wants to go first, but um, yeah, who uh, who's that? Who wants to? Monica and Michael are both unmuted, which sometimes gets you volunteered. I don't know. If you, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we can, we can go first. I mean, I'm a uh -huh. little bit nervous to kind of mm -hmm. talk about, you know, it's my first time. Yeah. doing anything like this so I, mean, I guess i can just try to do my best to kind of walk through it yeah um, exactly perfect me... this is a totally judgment-free zone where you are fully oh, yeah. supported and we know that it's a whole learning process so we're here for you and are yeah. eager to see what you have <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely appreciate it um so I, can you guys still see me because i have um the story yeah. pulled up so i can't see the camera um but we were, um, Nikki and I were working on story three, um, which says, as a user, I want to set up a new shopping list so I can track purchase items. Um, mm -hmm. And the AC for that was there was uh, three issues that we had to work on. The first one was generate a new unique token. Um, the second one was save the token to local storage. And the third one was show the user the list view. Mm -hmm. um, and then let me see. It would help if I share my screen. That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Can you see my screen? I see myself. Why do I see myself? <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull. And then I've I've had so many like technical issues with you know computers and laptops and everything this week. So I've been working off of um cold sandbox. Um, the team was really just cool enough to kind of show me how to set it up and like what's going on with that. So I've been using that Super until cool. I can get yeah. something a little bit more stable. Mm -hmm. um, so for the first one, for the new unique token, so we um, we kind of went with the example code that was um, posted in the story, um, mm -hmm. where it says that the gist that get hub link, um, and mm -hmm. that actually worked really well. So I'm trying to find exactly which page we posted that to it's in that helpers folder or mm -hmm. wait the actual token code because mm -hmm. oh. i know we made it into a new list was the the file we were working on mm -hmm. let's see here and then I can't even get my, I'm trying to get this to go down so we can see the entire code, but for some reason it's not letting me go up and down. My apologies. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Cool. So Monica, I don't know. I think I made a change and you might not have seen it yet. Where about um, in the new list dot js when we were pairing we had um a variable that called the get token and i right removed, yeah so i i removed it so i put it all in one line in that um initial token function there so like if you scroll over because it's getting cut off um 
the get token gets called. Okay, I see what you're doing. So you're, okay, I'm trying to figure out where we posted the um, the template code. I guess is what oh, I was trying to. In the return, is that it? Yeah, so line 21 and 21 to 29, I guess. That's where the HTML gets rendered. That token JavaScript file you looked at earlier with the, the list of words in the top, I think the, the actual code to generate the token is farted down in the same file. So that's the one yeah, that, that's, that's the one that I was trying to show first. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, so helpers tokens. Because I mean, I wanted everybody to at least kind of know like what. Oh, do you want to see mm -hmm. the rendered page? Yeah. Yeah, it's a long list. You're going to scroll way down. Mm -hmm. yep. And the thing too was like it looked different. Like the code itself looked different when we posted it than it does now. Like once we got it where we wanted it, we started kind of doing this, which I guess is like the random words that it uses to generate the token. Mm -hmm. So. We have that. Let me see. The second one is to save the token to local storage. Um, we both worked on that last night. I, I think that we had fun with that one. Mm -hmm. um, we, it kind of took us a second to get a feel for where we were supposed to put it in the code and then what it was supposed to look like um, once we, you know, got it implemented correctly. Mm -hmm. and go back to, So this is how we did the, um, how we say this local storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, I, what I'm seeing there is your, that initial token thing, you're checking to see if there's a token already in local storage. And if there is, you're setting that, that value into initial token and otherwise you're generating a new. Yes. Right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we, and we kind of were a little bit confused as to how it was supposed to work because we weren't <laughs> sure like how, <clears throat> You would affect mm -hmm. played into that, so there was we definitely had some. issues mm -hmm. with infinite loops. Um, oh yeah, and trying to call that get token function. So I don't know. I it was okay. kind of like trial and error, like trying to figure out how to use the use effect and use state, mm -hmm. and not have that function mm -hmm. keep running over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the function. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Because that, that's that stuff are, that I'm not super familiar with. So, are you saying the the function that gets you're saying the function that gets the token out of local yeah. storage, right? Yeah. So or no, you, the one that generates the token, because I think at first um, it was just like going nonstop, generating new new tokens. Mm -hmm. um, when so, I tried to set use the get token function to set the state um right i think oh so does that mean that use state was getting called over and over again i don't know Which what was, was that yeah. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I know, I know get token was getting called and i think because um maybe it was getting called on each re-render mm -hmm. um it was just nonstop, and at first we couldn't even, it wouldn't even compile, like it was just saying, uh, you have too many re-renders. Mm -hmm. So something that we were doing was not prevent, like was causing the get token to just keep being called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, you, did you happen to save, did you commit that, that version of the code, the one that was? Um, um, no, I think I, well, we kind of asked for help in Slack. Was that last night? I think. Yeah, that was that was last night. Oh, um, we, oh okay. Yeah. And I, I um, pasted some code that was like working enough to to show up, but uh -huh. was like constantly um, generating new tokens and displaying it. Um, oh, your, I see your gist. Yeah. Okay. Kind of go back down. So I think we had let's see, we had another line of code here, and it was just um, it was 
the generate token. We had a, oh. a very generate token, and then we had token, and it was we kind of had it within that use effect function. So it was like every time it would re render the yeah, page, I it was just thought about that. Token. We had, yeah, so that, we had an to take extra it out. line <laughs> that was setting <laughs> setting the token so that it wasn't it wasn't getting. Uh, we were using the use the use state set token inside the use effect so it, it just kept making a new token because we didn't oh, right. yeah. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool you looks like you got it worked out though um very good yeah. and the oh, last one is the oh the two. oh no go ahead i'm sorry i'm, I'm just... sorry no you were good <laughs> i was just gonna ask I... if you could show show our page yeah And I actually don't really know how to do it from here. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know how to. You can just um, make that right panel wider again, because that's the app there. Yeah. That's one way, I think. Open a new window. I think I want to leave it. So then, yeah. Similar list. So we got the token there, and then the camera had a really good idea, which is to kind of put like placeholder text um, on that particular page. So you have an idea of what the user is supposed to see when they get there. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be like an empty list that's unique to that token. So we kind of put that there. And then yeah. that just the, yep. the random that's token cool. is generated. I don't know what's, what's cosh. I've never seen that word before. Anyway, um, <laughs> I feel like the list has a lot of words like that. Uh, so the one I, I, I left a comment on the on the PR. Um, there's probably what should happen once there's a token is you would just redirect the user back to the um, the list view, which I think for now is just the you know just the root uh, slash. Um, and at that point, we should be showing a list that has that's only showing items that are associated with that token. So once we have a token for the user, um, you know, we're just pulling out items that have that token associated with the item. So that's um that's a bit of unfinished work. So we'll we'll figure out. Uh, I think maybe in the retro or something, we'll kind of figure out before we end the call. We'll figure out how we're going to kind of get that that work in. Um, luckily, Stacy did a little work ahead, so I think we're actually in good shape for. Uh, in terms of numbers of stories, we could spend more time on that this week, get that finished, and then um, <laughs> not have to worry too much about that next story about item items. So um, anyway, uh, good work. Um, it's, uh, it's always fun to experience those infinite loops and figure out how to, um, how to work around them. So. If I can call one thing out before, and I can leave a, a comment in the PR, but back in the code where, where you get that initial token, Yes, you can actually you do, you can actually pass a function into use state to get that state because right now the way it works is that every time that component renders, it's going to be calling local storage. Mm -hmm. So just right. you could take that that function that gets the initial token and just inline that right into use state, and the function will only be called that first render. We, I can, I'll drop a comment into the PR, but just wanted to call that out. Okay. Okay. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. I need to do a Great tutorial work. on on hooks and stuff. <laughs> but good work. Yeah. Nice job. Um, Amber and Mike. Yeah. Uh, I, I can share it. Um, let me share my screen. Da, da, da. <clears throat> can you see my screen? All right. Yep. Okay, awesome. So uh, we were tasked to do, well, first off, I want to say like holler at Amber for being really flexible during my time of traveling and all the hectic non-sleeps and coming back to the U.S. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, so we were tasked to do five, which is as a user, I wanted to be able to navigate between the list view and the add an item view. Um, and then I kind of broke it down to like 5.1, 5.2. 5.1 is two tabs are present at the bottom of the app on the list for the view list, the other for the add-in item view. And then 5.2 is when in, 
When in the add an item view, a back arrow appears in the header that takes place, takes the user back to the list view. Um, while I was in Germany, I didn't really have enough time to actually code. So what I did was like write notes down and, you know, when I finally got to look at the stories, like, okay, what do, what needs to happen? What do we need to do? Um, so when we finally synced up on, on Friday, you know, we, we meet and greets, uh, salvage roles. Amber took the driver's seat in terms of like coding out while I did the research and documentation. So that means like, you know, coming, uh, updating the wiki page and helping her find stuff when things got confusing. Um, and then we had problems building out the first 5.1 section, considering like the active class name was something that I wasn't used to looking at. And um, I had to go, so Amber continued working, reached out to people on Slack as well as, you know, Google. And this is the code that she came up with. Um, and I can actually, I can actually show you the actual do with the shortcut. You don't want to have to type yeah. those other three characters for a yarn, right? <laughs> <laughs> ZS, ZSH has really changed my life in the terminal, so um, yes. I'm still a newbie at it, but it's been really helpful. So th uh, this is the actual um, live project that we did. So what mm -hmm. we did is we created these two little boxes, add an item and two lists, and Lars pointed out like we wanted to make it mobile friendly because that's kind of we, the funny thing is we came from the same uh, dev bootcamp, so mm -hmm. lots of like the stuff that we learned is similar. So it really helped us a lot a lot when we built this out. So we wanted to make sure everything was mobile friendly. So when you click on to add an item, you don't have to click on the exact. Um, oh, what happened to it? The exact uh, page. Oh, there it goes. So when you want to add an item, you go here and, and add an item here. And one of the 5.2 was to create a back arrow. So what I did was I created this code and actually created a, a separate component labeled add item header. Mm -hmm. And all I did was bring this component to the add item page here. So that our thought mm -hmm. process was like, you know, um, if we decided to create new headers, um, maybe we can change this add item header to like a main he header so we can use it for different places um, throughout the, the pages. Yes. Um, and then I just went on Vector Arts and chose this back button and it goes right back to the add item list. Um, the challenges we faced was really uh, timing, um, considering I just came back, I felt like I didn't contribute as much as I wanted to. Um, but we, we were able to figure out ways to, you know, bounce back and forth. Um, and when we finally met yesterday, you know, we were both like finished both of the, the different story uh, stories that we um, worked on and ended up finishing the task yesterday. So it was awesome. Yeah. Um, nice. Amber, would you like to add more stuff? Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> pretty thorough. Like, like when I was doing um, the tabs at the bottom for the home page, um, I had started out using Float because like our oh, our yeah. bootcamp thankful was um they taught us Float initially, but like the end of our CSX section, they were pretty much like you need to use Flexbox, like you need to mm -hmm. like they didn't like specifically said it, but the impl the implication was that you need to like be abreast of new technologies and be implementing the newest technology and mm -hmm. Flexbox is the newest CSS thing, so don't really use Float. But I was like, but Float makes sense. And I ended up fiddling with it for like longer than I needed to because it was just like barely lining up, almost lining up, and all mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So I ended up just like using Flexbox and then just fixing it to the bottom using position absolute. Mm -hmm. Along nice. with we did change the router on our project as well. So like the um the slash, what I view is like the home page whenever you like you know, pull up something in Yarn Start, uh -huh. that's like our home page, as opposed to mm -hmm. like um, what it is now that it pulls up the list. So I moved some of those around as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. right there. But yeah, that's it. Cool. Very good. Um, yeah, I really like, uh, I mean, I, I really appreciate everybody's flexibility this week and kind of working around schedules and all those kind of things. And um, like Steve said in the, in the, and Stacey said in the chat, this, you know, really good, like, 
communication in the channel and all that kind of stuff. It really helps us kind of stay up on, on what y'all are working on. Um, yeah, and uh, it's going to be interesting to, to, I think, to merge the code. I think there's maybe we have a couple. We're going to need to kind of settle on one pattern for our URLs, I think. Um, that slash is it's kind of your entry to the app, right? And so that, that should have probably the responsibility of understanding whether the user has a token. If they don't have a token, prompt them to either at, uh, like to make a token. And then once they have a token, take them to the list view. And then they have the option to you know, kind of add something to the list or look at the list, right? Like those are probably the, the things. We'll, we'll figure all that stuff out. Um, let's try to keep that in mind when we're merging the, the two, um, the two uh, PRs. Um, cool. Yeah, nice work. Uh, anybody have any other questions or feedback? Or anything? Yeah, um, when we're doing CSS styling, do we do you want us to follow like the BIM methodologies, or are we following any type of methodology when doing CSS? The way we label things. Yeah, I mean, mm, if people aren't familiar with BIM, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's um, it's uh, elements modifiers. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, BIM. Um, I I always found BIM really confusing when I was a developer, but um, we are we don't have a, a methodology necessarily that we're that we're following. So uh, you know whatever works for y'all is fine. Um, but these early the early stories, we really don't need to focus too much on the styling. Like we have a okay. couple of stories towards the end where we're gonna we can go in and kind of try to make the interface look a little nicer. Like we should probably need to focus mostly on the functionality. You know if you get to if you get it done on Tuesday or something and want to spend some time styling the app, I think that's great. But um, you know probably most weeks you're gonna be like we have plenty of on our plate to kind of just like get these things you know, kind of functioning. Um, you know, a little bit of styling to like pin those things at the bottom of the page makes a lot of sense. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, spend a ton of time making, you know, the list items look really good at this point. There's still these stories later on too. But... Cool. Awesome. All right. So um, thank you all. Good job. Uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to take over to sharing if that's right. Nick? Yeah, all yours. Ooh. Awesome. Um, so we're going to do our first retro. So um, you know, I've, I've posted a couple times, and it's in I think the meeting invite too about sort of how the retros work. But um, y'all can see that I assume That's my screen. So there's a now a, a project in um, in your uh, kind of space here with this week week two retro. And there's three columns. Um, get rid of that. So the idea, the, what we're doing basically is we're going to talk about the previous two weeks. Um, we're going to share appreciations of each other. Thing, it, you know, if somebody you know did something that was helpful to you, or um, you know anything like we'll just share those kinds of things. Uh, we'll talk about what we did over the last two weeks that went well. Like like those are the things that we want to keep doing over the next the coming two weeks. Um, make sure we don't kind of lose sight of them and then what things we can improve. So if there are things that, that didn't go so well or whatever, like we can talk about about those things and we'll try to try to pick maybe just one thing or maybe two things um, out of that list to focus on improving for the next couple of weeks. Um, so this is a pretty typical thing in a lot of engineering jobs is you uh, kind of work in two-week sprints and at the end of each two weeks you do a retro of the of the previous two weeks and you just kind of try to always be just getting a little bit better as you uh, like over time. So um, in the interest of time, uh, we'll just each person just limit yourself to three cards, a maximum of three cards. You don't have to do three cards in each column, but a max of three in each column. Um, go ahead and like start adding adding cards. And then uh, when you're done, maybe just in the chat, just note that you're, you're kind of done adding cards. And then once everyone's done, then we'll start talking about it. One thing that we did in our most recent retro for the other cohort was instead of creating individual cards for each of the three things, if you just create one card with three bullet points in it, it makes it a little easier to find your items as you're like going through and discussing them. Good point. Um, also, another hot tip, um, throughout your two weeks, if you like keep notes somewhere about these things, it'll make these retros so much easier for you because it, like you get so pressured at the time to be like, I don't remember what happened the last two weeks. So just think like from now going forward to the next week, if something happens and you're thinking about it, just jot it down. So that when the time comes, you're like ready to go. That's all. Okay.
since I wasn't involved, I'm going to pop off. Very good job, everyone. So Thanks, excited Stacey. to see we'll everything see you, you did. Bye. And so these cards should cover both week one and week two. So um, I know Monica and, and Amber, you weren't here for week one, but um, there may be a couple of items other folks want to add to that. So dumb question. So with the cars, because I've never done this before. So are mm -hmm. we typing out each section as we're on the live call and then talking about what it was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just take a few minutes to, to add our cards here um, on the board. And then um, so each of you should have this pulled up in, in your own browser. And um, you can just hit this kind of plus sign thing to add a new card to the, the column. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, okay, I see. Because I was trying to figure out, I'm like, how am I minimizing this? It, yeah, <laughs> I had it all the way up. I'm like, I can't get to it. I'm actually going to stop okay. sharing while I'm adding cards, but I'm self conscious. <laughs> <time, but. laughs> okay, yeah, this is interesting too. Look, like, I've never um, heard of the concept of retros, and I think it's a really good idea. And I think it's mm -hmm. um, a good way to like stay organized. And is there a link for the retro? So I'm looking, I don't see that particular um, tab. Um, so I just I put in the chat. It. Yeah, it's this, this project okay. slash three thing. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so
Uh, two down, four to go. If you're done, just put done in the chat. Everybody, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's everybody. Um, cool. Uh, so the random order has me going first. Which, um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I guess. So what we'll do is each person will go through and talk about your points for the appreciation, and then we'll start the or we'll start again, and I'll, like I'll start. We'll go through what went well, and then um, through uh, what we think we did improve. So. Um, so I, I just wanted to start with my appreciation just by thanking Lars for putting in um, extra time with Ernie in that first week. Um, it was rough, like it, uh, you know, she uh, she tried really hard, and um, you know, I just had a lot kind of going on. But you were there to kind of uh, spend a little extra time, and I think it was really helpful. And um, uh, anyway, I, I, you know, I think it went as well as, as it could, and uh, hopefully she'll be back in a future cohort. So um, nice work with that. Um, and then just for everybody, just kind of thank you for rolling with uh, what was kind of a rocky start to the cohort. A couple people dropping out and um, Monica and Amber just love that you were uh, flexible and willing to kind of jump in even after we already had the train kind of leaving the station. So um, thank you for, for that. Um, uh, Steve, I think you're up. Unmuting. Yeah. Yeah, for mine, uh, another thanks to Lars for for jumping in. I hopped on in the morning and saw a whole bunch of communication going on and uh, was really grateful that, that he was able to, to help out Andrew for all the direction and kind of guidance with, with both the mentors and participants. Like that's been really helpful and uh, doesn't feel like, at least for on my end, like there are a whole bunch of unanswered questions. So I mean, that's been really great. And then to the whole team, Nikia, Mike, Amber, and Monica, like we're just taking care of business and getting it done and getting those PRs out. Uh, and then Amber and Monica for kind of like Andrew said, jumping in and coming up to speed uh, really quickly. So like kudos to you two. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I really want to just shout out with Nakeem and Amber for just being flexible and being wonderful teammates. Um, I mean, when we first touched base, I really got to know a little bit more about who I was working with and they're like amazing people like trying to, you know, do amazing things. And like, I really appreciate that for their like thirst to like achieve those accomplishments. So, you know, mad props to you. And in terms of the mentors, you know, thank, thank you for being vocal in the chat and, you know, sending us resources. I mean, this is a platform for me and for us to like learn more and become developers. So lots of people could use these type of stuff and we're getting them. So hopefully we can use this and share it with the people that are trying to accomplish to what we want to do too. Nice. Please, nice. My chat's good. I can't see. But I'm sure. <laughs> Is it Nikina? Are you up? Or? Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I appreciated all the mentors kind of like leading by example in Slack and in the pull request comments, just kind of showing how. It helps to be noisy, as you say. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, to both of my partners, it was just really cool to get to know you a little bit and to work with you. And I felt like totally honored to get a chance to spend time with them and pair with them. And special thanks to Monica and Amber for jumping in. Mm -hmm. Uh, my two were, I'm sorry, I'm going to wait for you because I let it fly at my brain. There you yeah. go. There so yeah, the first one was just like, <laughs> similar to everyone else has been saying, just everybody's really open and communicative, being responsive in Slack. I know that helped me a lot 
while I was working through um, the first half of our issues during our career programming session. And I also wanted to say that Mike, Mike was really good about like getting me to vocalize my actions and thought process while I was coding. Cause I was telling him while we were working together that I have a tendency to just, when I get to a task, just like put my head down, just like go for it. And you know, that's bad habits, both in teamwork and interviews since I'm interviewing right now. So I really appreciate him. Like, you know, be like, Hey, what, what's, what are you doing? It's like, Oh mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Duh. So I really appreciated that as well. Thank you. Pretty cool. Monica? Um, so first, definitely appreciate Nakima. Like, thank you so much. Like, just, you have no idea. Just helping me not only with, you know, working on our story and getting those things taken care of, but just helping me to get acclimated to this program as a whole and just kind of, you know, jumping in and making sure that I could stay organized and kind of knew what was going on. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, I'm gonna update my card, um, but I just wanna thank everyone else as well for just being, for having us and being open and allowing us a space to, you know, to jump in and kind of have those growing pains. It was our first week, so mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to learn, a lot of, you know, learning by trial and error. So I just really appreciate you guys for being flexible and just being patient with us and, you know, kind of letting us learn and walk our way through everything. Mm -hmm. That's great. Lines. Yeah, the one uh, one thing I wanted to call out was this tool that we saw on the screen share, share earlier. It seems like a very useful one to, to check out a, a branch without having to, you know, go through checking out locally and creating the, you know, and, and running yarn, et cetera. So that seems like very, very helpful for, for quickly checking out uh, someone's branch and see what's going on. Yeah, that's that is super cool. I didn't I didn't realize you could do that too. I'd heard of Code Sandbox, but I didn't know that, that was that's what it did. Awesome. All right. So what went well? So, um, I mean, a couple of things. I mean, there were a lot of things that we could probably say here, but uh, everyone worked really hard and made good progress on their issues. I mean, that's kind of, um, you know, that's uh, kind of the the core of what we're doing, right, is working on an app together. So um, making progress on those issues is super key. Um, you know, Stacy was kind enough to jump in and help finish that, that one issue from week one. So that was helpful, kind of keep the, um, keep the group on track. Um, uh, did a little work ahead, which I think is actually gonna come in handy. Um, so I think we need to spend a little more time on the one issue from this week. So it all works out. But, um, you know, I, I should probably add actually something to the card is just, um, I feel like the group did, even just these first couple of weeks, I saw a lot of kind of opening up to like, oh, it's okay for me to like, just be like in the chat, like saying what I'm doing and kind of just being open about like what you're working on and stuff. And that's, that's uh, exactly what we want to see. It's going to make it easier for everyone to kind of collaborate and uh, kind of, um, you know, just keep up on, on what everyone's doing uh, for us to be in the chat. Doing that. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's it for me. Uh, Steve, you're next. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, um, kind of like what I said in the chat earlier, that just everyone's communication during the week was really on point, um, especially with coordinating just individual schedules and traveling and whatnot. Like, it was, it was great. Yep. Mike? You're muted. I was muted. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Primarily for me, it was finishing the stories on time when on vacation. Uh, prior to joining Collab Lab, I reached out to Andrew's like, you know, I'll be on vacation. Will this be possible? And he mentioned like, only if you make it possible. I'm like, yeah, I'll make it possible. So <laughs> that went really well after eating bratwurst and beers in Germany while coding. That was really fun. <laughs> um, and then what's awesome about this team is, you know, the feedback, sharing ideas and the open mindedness. Um, you know, I've done some pair programming before and I feel like this cohort has been amazing in terms of vocalizing, you know, their thought process or giving you, you know, structured feed, structured criticism so that like, you know, you can better your code. And, you know, I really appreciate, appreciate about that, with this team. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I think what went well was, yeah, with everything going on that we still got a good amount of time to work together 
like synchronously. So, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't write it down, but yeah, I think, I think I noticed also that people are opening up and I guess, I don't know what's the word, like just being more in contact <laughs> with each other mm -hmm. um, in Slack. So yeah, that's it for me. Amber, you know? So yeah, I'm, I pretty much am saying the same thing <laughs> I was saying because I mean, <laughs> I but I did want to especially highlight the fact that like during the holiday season, December as a whole, but also right before Christmas, people tend to just fall by the wayside for one reason or another. So I am truly impressed that like a bunch of people got together and handled a bunch of tasks like with a deficient amount of time in a particularly inefficient time of year. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's definitely worth like saying that it's a good thing. And I just feel like both with um, me and Michael and Nakima and Monica that like, it all just happened really easily. It's like, all, like I don't know, typically when you try and plan with people that have lives, they could just, you just get a lot more speed bumps than we usually did. And it just kind of went really smoothly. So I thought that was really nice. Cool. Um, so yeah, just kind of piggybacking off of what everybody said about communication being really open and flowing between all of us. Um, I think that that's really helpful and it's really helpful for, you know, someone like me or like Amber kind of coming in new and not knowing what to expect. You know, if those channels are open. We kind of always know what's going on and we're always in the loop. Um, so I feel like that was really good. That went well as far as everybody just talking to each other. Um, in particular, again, Nakima just being really vocal and slack and just really flexible about, you know, when we can make time to you know, get together and start working on our stories. So I feel like that went well also. Very good. I don't think I have uh, too much more to add here. Just second or thirding the, the communication part that uh, I saw, so mm -hmm. it was, which I thought was really good this week. Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, so what we can improve. So I don't know how we improve this. I mean, it, it was something that didn't go great. It was just the, having that kind of tough start with a couple of people dropping out. Um, we, are talk, we were talking about this kind of different ways of uh, just kind of making sure people are kind of ready uh, to do collab lab like we're not getting someone in over their head or like people really have the time to do it and all those kinds of things so um just making sure it's a good fit so we're trying to we're going to do some refinement to our kind of how we uh admit people into the program uh, to, to make this more rare i mean it could always happen so um but um and then i guess the only other thing i would i might make a suggestion that um so <laughs> i mean when i when i wrote all these stories out um, it was all based on my own having built this app before, and uh, there, you know, I have a different set of knowledge than any of you do, and like we, all, you know, it's a Venn diagram. We all have overlapping bits of knowledge, but um, I, I'm the, <laughs> now that we're in the third cohort, I'm like there are a lot of assumptions built into these cards that I wrote. So um, don't don't assume that you understand what it is if you're at all kind of like I think probably is this. It's totally totally valid to just go in the channel and say. We think it's about this, is that right? And you say yes, or like, oh no, no, whoops, I forgot to write down that you also need to do this, or maybe like, you know, like when I said this, I meant, you know, it, it was actually this whole level of detail. I feel like with this this week with that one card, it was that, you know, I think you all handled the AC correctly because you hit all the AC, but there was some assumptions built into the description of the story that um, I think, you know, like weren't, weren't as clear as they could have been. So um, anyway. My suggestion would just be to, you know, like really just kind of validate that you're doing like the kind of the right thing by, you know, like it's going to like kind of satisfying the story and uh, maybe not just the AC. Like it's, uh, these are all just, you know, like I'm saying, like just written by me kind of like in one pass. So um, probably a lot of detail that needs to be added to those cards. They could be refined. Stacy was saying to me earlier that the flip side of that is that it's, that's pretty real world. Like this happens all the time in actual jobs, you know, like your product manager will will write out a card and to them it's very clear and then you look at it and you're like i don't know what, what you even mean by that um so it's you know there's this is a very real world skill to have to clarify like when you say this is this what you mean and all those kind of things totally open to people doing that so um don't hesitate to to get in and just kind of ask questions about about stuff and then steve you're next right 
Yep. Um, I think just asking, asking questions sooner and more often, like noisy is good. Um, and there are lots of different ways that uh, you can get ideas out there and kind of get feedback, like code sandbox, you can push a branch, you can create a gist and show it. But I think being able to ask questions rather than maybe spin your wheels uh, <laughs> into a problem that you're hitting and not and getting like frustrated or something like that, it's you can get around all of that just by throwing a question out there and someone can chime in and you know just completely shortcut you to getting what you need. And so I think even that's the biggest thing I think that helped me when I was learning was just being able to ask questions and and not feeling just feeling empowered to ask those questions. Like it's a safe place. We're all expecting the questions. We're all expecting to to want to be able to help you grow and accelerate your learning. So I would just say ask more and ask often. Um, I think for me, uh, uh, best practices and how it can be a better remote individual contributor. I feel like sometimes I don't think I'm doing enough and maybe finding more resources like what other people's experiences being a remote developer and you know seeing their side of things and how we can learn better, become better uh, developers that way. Um, me not being afraid and asking for help. I think having a background in technical recruiting and like interviewing software engineers as a living has kind of put me into kind of an imposter syndrome mindset. Uh, Cause you know, these people are super intelligent and you know, came from CS degree background. So it was really hard for me to really vocalize like, oh, do, am I doing this right? how can I ask that question to people that are ready developers? So kind of getting over that hump and being more vocal about that. And um, like what Andrew and Steve says, just being more vocal with the team and keeping up with that. Cool. Um, so I guess my feedback, it's kind of um, related to or it's the flip side of what went well, because what went well is we had a good amount of time to pair program, but on the other hand, I don't think we really worked together in the in-between time. <laughs> so um, I think it might be something that could be improved is like maybe more communication and more back and forth when we're not meeting um, in real time. Um, and I think also this was probably not, yeah, it wasn't a normal <laughs> week. Like we switched up teams and stuff. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah. So like the, the routine housekeeping stuff, like making a branch and like starting the wiki, like, I think that should be out of the way quicker than it was this yeah. time. Can I clarify about the written feedback? So you're talking about with your, the person you're pairing with, you would want, when you're not actually in a synchronous thing that you would be talking about, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do this, like kind of making it visible in the channel. Yeah, I kind of felt like, um, so I, I felt like I hesitated to really work on things um, because I don't wanna feel like I'm taking over the whole project or taking over the whole task and also, mm -hmm. I guess maybe related to that, I didn't feel like there was something I could be doing when we weren't meeting in real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I guess with your pair, well, anyway, yeah, that's good feedback. We'll let everybody else talk about it. If we, we can come back to that. But uh, yeah, it's a super valid point. Um, Amber, right? And, um, well, mine actually is gonna piggyback more off of Nikima's because I do have like more having more communication because I feel like most people have like a natural tendency to like under communicate whether it's because of like their own pride or they don't want to feel like they're in the way or whatever your like reasoning behind it is. So that could also tie into just like communicating more in between. So I know when I was talking to Mike, he's like, make sure you let me know like 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 you know essentially like not like what you're doing so to speak, but kind of like what changes you made so I kept abreast and I didn't do a good job of doing that. But like, you know, in the future, that would be helpful because it's like, at least I would imagine it's really difficult to over communicate, especially in this field. So just like mm -hmm. on the flip side, 
just putting yourself out there more, vocalizing your thought process more, chronicling your work more, just helps in the longer run with both like just maintainability for the future of this project and like working together in the during. Points. Um, so as I mentioned on the card, um, I really don't have any feedback as far as what needs to improve as far as like the team as a whole or like as far as um, my partner. I just feel like what I was looking at as far as what needs to improve is just mainly my familiarity with React as a whole. Like I've never coded in React before and until now. So I'm really kind of learning all of this as I go. So I definitely need to be making it a priority to be getting my hands dirty and just really trying to get familiar with React so that I can feel more comfortable so that I can be able to jump in that driver's seat, you know, if and when need be so that I can be, you know, a more effective partner. So that's something that I know for sure that I need to um, improve on. And then also to just definitely making more time for, this project as a whole, like in particular, the Slack communications, the messages and everything, just making sure that I'm getting back to everybody right away. Because I noticed like I've been, like I'll look at a message and like forget to respond or just like not make as much time for it as I should. Like, and I get that it is the holidays, but I know that's something I need to kind of get in my head that, okay, this is the priority, this is what I'm doing now. So just make sure that this is coming first, you know, just, above everything else that I have going on. So for me, it's just definitely being more open and, and being more noisy, as y'all would say, um, mm -hmm. in, in the Slack and just being more present in general. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, thank you. Um, Lars, are you there yep. okay. uh, I think a lot of this has been said already, uh, but, uh, and you know, and you, you covered it a little bit earlier, and here with you know it's a weird week with holidays and travel and new a new pair coming getting up to speed etc so but in general it's 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 tricky to give timely feedback uh, and it's hard to fix them that's why we have some outstanding issues now because uh, we didn't quite get to the review part until very late in the process and you know if if everything's perfect that's that's great and then, but very often there there are some tweaks needed right so uh, the the earlier they can be ready the the better. Uh, and the second second point here is, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, for for you to be getting some feedback and to get some some input from others. So uh, one thing I'd had good experience with is opening PRs early. Uh, you know, even if things aren't perfect yet, uh, you know, on my team uh, at my day job, we, we have a label of in progress uh, that people would put on. So there's no there's no risk of anyone reviewing and merging it. Like this this is under development. It'll it'll change. But it's a great place to get feedback to discuss what's going on you know validate that you're on the right track etc so I, I encourage you to to do that and, and not sort of hold hold your keep your brand secret or or uh, sort of in isolation until the very last minute so just just broadcast it and, and get people's feedback as early as possible and you know the branches are free and, and git right so if you want to create your own little branch on the side and and experiment with something don't hesitate to do that either. Yeah, really good points. And we're, we're kind of out of time. So I'm going to, normally I would have us discuss which, what we want to kind of improve. I think I'm going to make a couple of suggestions this time, though, just for the sake of time. Um, I do like Lars's idea of the, the PR. So what you can do, you know, where everyone's, you know, kind of getting in the habit of creating the branch right away. But as soon as you're committing to it, you should probably open up a PR and put work in progress, you know, WIP or in progress or something. Um, and that gives us the main advantage of that, like, you know, a mentor could check out your branch and see what's going on. But the nice thing about having a PR is that there's a place for the conversation to happen, right? We can kind of be talking in GitHub about what you're doing and um, getting feedback early that way. So let's, let's start doing that. Um, and then the other thing is just, uh, you know, we're all talking about just kind of more, kind of more communication, not, you know, kind of uncovering assumptions and those kinds of things. I think if we do those two things for the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to be in really good shape, uh, you know. Like, you know, hopefully, like with the holidays behind us, we can kind of get into more of a regular schedule and get those, you know, the wiki pages, the branches, all those things set up early in the week, and then, um, you know, be trying to hit like kind of the completion by Thursday or Friday, so we have time to react to changes before Sunday. So, um, 
uh, in the interest of time too, maybe we'll we'll have a discussion in the channel a little bit about kind of how to um, where to go with um, the issue from this week. Uh, like there's a couple little things that need to be added to that one, so that one might carry over to this week. But maybe it's a different pair. But anyway, we can figure all that stuff out in the channel. So, um, any uh, any last last words before uh, cohort three drops off? Uh, just a quick question: like doing uh -huh. these retros and stuff and breaking yeah. into two week segments is is this what agile means? <laughs> it's part of agile. Yeah, it's a really good okay. question. It's um. It's not really what agile means, but it is. These are some of the ceremonies you would do in an agile, uh, like on an agile team. Agile really means like building something small and reacting to changing requirements and things like that. But part of the way you do that is to break up the work into two week chunks and then change course if you need to, kind of so you can adjust more quickly than specking out everything in, in the beginning and then getting you know a year down the road and saying, oh, that's not what we wanted. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a really good question. Nikima. Um, I just wanted to say really quickly, like I know that we're all like we're in different time zones and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I felt myself hesitating to kind of like give a heads up or like say something to my partner because I didn't want her to feel pressured to respond right away. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to maybe clear the air, like if I if I like at you in Slack, like it doesn't mean it's urgent. It's just that I want to get it out whenever I'm, whenever it's on my mind. That Not is, that, you that is exactly, <laughs> yeah, that is exactly the expectation I set with people on my team. Alejandro can, can confirm this where I'll, I'll be talking to you in Slack at whatever time it's convenient for me to work, but it does not mean I need an, an answer right away. Unless I say I need an answer right away. <laughs> and then, and then uh, so yeah, that, I think that's, that's a great expectation to set. Thanks for kind of getting that out there. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop recording so I can post.